Since the end of 2019, the US economy has actually grown at the fastest pace in the G7. President Biden can claim the fastest job growth of any president. Yet despite strong growth in jobs and GDP, there's a real sense of dissatisfaction with the US economy because of high inflation and falling real wages. Firstly, to what extent is Biden to blame for high inflation? And how should we view his economic record? Well, inflation has reached the highest level since the 1980s, leading to high gas prices and falling real incomes. Even when we exclude energy, core inflation has risen to the highest level for many decades. Inflation has been caused by three main factors. Number one, Biden's fiscal stimulus. Number two, the Federal Reserve's decision to keep interest rates low. And thirdly, global factors like rising oil prices. Back in 2021, the American Rescue Package of 1.9 trillion was the largest fiscal stimulus in US history and has meant that Biden has had more impact on the economy for good or ill than most other presidents. Now, how much of this caused the inflation that we see today? Research by the Federal Reserve Bank of New York suggests that the fiscal stimulus added around 2.5 percentage points to US inflation. They also say that around 60% of inflation is due to excess demand, the economy reaching uh, full capacity. However, the fiscal stimulus is only part of the overheating economy. We also have to look at the role of the Federal Reserve, because even until the summer of 2022, when inflation was rising to 6-7%, they were keeping interest rates very low. They were very slow to increase interest rates, and now admit they did get it wrong, underestimating the extent of inflation and how embedded it had become in the economy. In addition to this excess demand, an undoubted factor is rising oil prices and high global inflation. At least 40 or 50 percent of EU inflation is due to international factors. You can see here the link between oil prices and US inflation. And as oil prices start to fall this autumn, US inflation is starting to come down. Also, it is worth pointing out that US inflation is actually lower than many EU countries who are experiencing higher inflation despite much lower economic growth. This is for two factors. Number one, the strong dollar that has kept US import prices low, and also uh, the price of natural gas soaring in Europe because of Putin cutting off gas, and America doesn't have this problem because of its own domestic supplies. So usually presidents have only a very limited impact on the inflation rate, even though they often get judged on it. If we look at presidents in the past, you can see how Carter was hit by high inflation in the 1970s. Also, it's interesting how both Carter and Biden have both had very impressive job figures, but their presidents have been overshadowed by inflation. Clinton had low inflation, but he was kind of lucky of a global situation. Under Reagan, inflation fell, but it was nothing to do with his policies and almost entirely the Federal Reserve's tight monetary policy. So unusually for presidents, Biden has had an impact on inflation. But if we blame him for causing some inflation, we should also bear in mind that it has contributed to strong growth and close to full employment. And despite all the problems, that's a definite advantage. Also, I think if you go back to 2021, for many low income uh, workers, COVID was a real problem. And so the stimulus checks did help many people make ends meet. I think the most unfortunate thing about the fiscal stimulus is that it occurred at the same time as rising oil prices, rising cost push factors, and also the Federal Reserve keeping interest rates too low for too long. In another world, it could have been a fiscal stimulus with a much more moderate inflationary impact. But of course, whatever caused inflation, that's little comfort to those workers who are seeing falling real wages. And real wages are falling at the fastest level for many years. And yet, how is it possible that real wages are falling when GDP uh, is growing so quickly? Well, corporate profit has uh, soared in the past two years. You can see how corporate profit soared from two trillion to over three trillion in the space of just two years. And that's equivalent to around $3,000 a 
per American citizen. But it's not been shared with the average citizen. It's been kept by the owners of companies and those who receive dividends. So it is a real problem for America, this unequal distribution of the proceeds of growth. Growth is high, but it means nothing to those who are seeing falling real wages. Now, an important consideration is what will happen in 2023. Some are optimistic inflation will continue to fall. An economist like Paul Krugman is optimistic that with falling oil prices, falling price of shipping and falling market rents, that this will feed through into lower cost push inflation. Others are less optimistic. They argue that inflation has become embedded. It's been around too long and this is causing a rise in inflation expectations and also pushing up core factor inflation. Inflation will fall in 2023. The big question is how much? Will it be enough to enable real wages to rise? Another big question about the US economy, and I'll do a whole video on this soon, is what's gonna to happen to house prices. By many metrics, they're overvalued. And if house prices do fall very significantly, this will likely be a very big drag on the economy because uh, it's the biggest form of wealth. And when house prices fall, it almost inevitably causes some kind of slowdown or deep recession. So the outlook for 2023 looks less promising. America's likely to have slower economic growth, but at least inflation will come down. But I think more important for the economy in the long term is the domestic legislation that Biden has passed rather than fiscal policy. And there have been three big uh, policy initiatives which will have a big effect on the US economy. These are the infrastructure spending, uh, support for industry, uh, domestic industry and trying to bring microchip manufacture back to the US. And thirdly, the Inflation Reduction Act, which is primarily about encouraging green energy and renewable energy. And certainly the first and third will have a very uh, big impact in the long term. Historically, the US has underinvested in public uh, goods because Americans don't like tax. The tax rate is one of the lowest as a share of GDP. And so there's been a backlog of many infrastructure projects which have not been occurred. And sometimes this is very obvious, bridges not working, potholes in the road. So there's a lot of infrastructure projects which can give quite a big return in terms of improving the productivity and competitiveness of the economy in the long term. Also, green technology already is starting to improve. The tax credits and subsidies are definitely encouraging industry to switch towards electric cars and encouraging renewable energy. And this is not just good for the climate, but also a potential source of economic growth in the long term, because this is the, um, you could say, the new industry of the world as we try to shift away from fossil fuels. So I'm fairly optimistic that given the underinvestment of the past, this infrastructure bills and support for renewable energy will have a very positive impact on the long-term economic growth. Now, there'll be no immediate short-term fix or surge in demand, far from it. It'll be a long-term benefit over many years, but it is a good start to try to fix some of the backlogs affecting the US economy. Also, an interesting thing about the Inflation Reduction Act is that it's going to raise quite a lot of money and it includes fairly controversial tax on big firms earning over one billion pounds. But it is a start to redistribute some of the very high corporate profit we've seen increase in recent years. So it's good to try to tax more from companies who have seen a surge in profits. So overall, I tend to look upon the US economy as a lot of good potential. Now, this may be partly because I'm in the UK and the UK economy is doing far worse than America. And we look at uh, US growth rates and with, with a certain degree of envy. But it also highlights how you can have economic growth, but the average worker still becomes worse off. And this is a, a strange phenomenon of the inflationary growth we've seen in the past year or so. So the challenge going forward is try to make sure that the growth benefits everybody and not just uh, corporations with monopoly power. So it's too early to fully judge Biden's um, economic record, but I tend to be 
more sympathetic to the fiscal stimulus, which at the time seemed like a good idea. And if I could go back in time, I would still want to do it. Maybe not quite as much, but I feel that it's better to be too generous in that situation than too uh, stingy. I think a bigger criticism could be levelled at the Federal Reserve because leaving interest rates at close to zero for so long was a mistake and they could have taken some of the heat out of the economy earlier rather than later. And now with interest rates rising very rapidly, it is going to cause problems for the housing market and for the wider economy, especially with the savings ratio already falling to uh, a record low of around 3%. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up. And if you're from America and feel bad about your economy, have a look at this video on the uh, UK economy, because I would like to show we're doing a lot worse than uh, good old America.